Whether you're a homeowner now or you're planning on being a homeowner down the road, there's always these like little myths that pop up like uh, secret ways to pay off your home faster and you know these little hacks and all kinds of cool things. But the reality is the only way to do it is with some good old fashioned hard work. So strap on your boots, put on your tight pants, tuck your shirt in and put your hat on because we're going to talk about some good old fashioned ways. I'm not fashion, I don't want to say good old fashioned, some practical tips on how to pay off your mortgage sooner. There's these two numbers here. There's your principal and there's your interest. Now, depending on the price point and the interest rate, these two numbers will always add up to the same number in your loan term, as long as you have a fixed interest rate, which you probably should if you're buying a home relatively soon. I wanna show you how to figure out the interest. How do you figure out the principal? I don't know. I actually texted my lender friend saying, hey, how do you figure it out? And she responded, Javier, I don't know. I just put it in the system and it gives me a number. <laughs> How you figure out the principal is with this complicated formula. So I'm not going to teach you that. Okay, I'm going to teach you how to figure out the interest, which is a lot more simpler. So now remember, every single month for the 30 year period will add up to the same monthly payment. For example, this number here. So it's a $300,000 house with a $291,000 loan. You can see here with the principal and interest, the number adds up to the same, regardless if it's year one or the last payment year 30, it always adds up to the same number. So to figure out the interest that you're paying for that particular month, what you do is you get the balance of the loan, you multiply it by the interest, rate not interest rate interest rate i don't know why there was a space between there and that is the number that you get you get this number and you divide it by 12 and that's what you pay for your interest for that particular month here it is on the chart in case you don't believe me now remember the number is always going to be the same regardless of what month so the interest gets applied and whatever's left over of that number gets applied towards a principal so you'll see your principal drop very very slowly and you'll see your balance barely drops anything at all. So the following month, they use the new balance to calculate the interest. So they get the balance, they multiply with the interest, they divide that by 12, and that's why you only see like a fraction difference, maybe a dollar on the principal and maybe 50 cents a dollar less on the interest. And this trend continues for 30 years. Over time, as the mortgage amount drops, the interest starts dropping too. Why is this? Is this any kind of magic? No, because the balance is dropping and balance multiplied by the interest rate divided by 12, that number naturally drops. The principal naturally increases. And as the principal naturally increases, you see that interest number reduce every month more and more and more. And eventually this compounds to the point where like the last few years of your mortgage, you're paying almost very little to the interest and every almost everything going to the principal. It's crazy when you look at how much money you pay of interest in a traditional 30 year loan. First of all, let's assure this. This is why it's super crucial. You try to get your interest rate as low as possible. I always tell you down payment assistance programs seem like they're a good, you know, like temptation, right? Like me in this brown shirt, tempting, right? <laughs> Sorry, that's terrible. I, I just realized now I do look naked because the brown's very close to my, my skin tone. So don't get any ideas. But look what happens in this number if I increase 3% to 4%. Um, that monthly payment doesn't increase that much. Like 100 bucks is easy to float, 100, 150, whatever the number is. Look at what happens when you over the interest over time. It's, it's insane. It's a lot more. Now, that being said, what are the practical ways of getting it paid? There's this uh, thing that people keep talking about, like if you make bi-weekly payments, which means instead of paying, let's say 1300 every month, you pay 650 every two weeks. And that somehow magically makes you, you know, pay off your mortgage faster. Well, in researching this, really what happens is you make an extra month's worth of payments. Uh, in this article, it states here, essentially by doing this, instead of making 12 payments in a year, the numbers work out where you make 13 payments in one year. So that effect isn't that amazing. I mean, it does help for sure, but you don't have to call your bank and say, hey, bruv, uh, can you please you know, give me bi-weekly payments? You can have the same effect by simply making an extra payment every year. Now you can do this by literally making an extra payment in one of the payments throughout the year, or simply get your monthly paid it, paid it <laughs> payment divided by 12, and you add this amount every month, and it adds up to about another uh, payment in a year. By doing this, two things happen. You pay your mortgage off a lot faster, so it went from this date to this date, and of course, you're for your interest, instead of paying this amount, you only paid this amount. The reason why this is happening is quite simple. You're 
paying off that balance a lot faster. Instead of reducing that balance by 500 bucks to a thousand, which will only add about to maybe a dollar difference in the interest the following month, by adding that extra little oomph, you're kind of shortcutting it. You're kind of getting ahead of the line. If you look at that amortization calculator or calendar, um, essentially you can start seeing how it works out where the balance, as the balance drops, the interest, you know, adjusts and whatnot. Sorry, my daughter wants to play Frozen 2 in the background and I'm recording this after, so you're gonna have to just deal with it. Let's say you're January 2024, okay? Um, you owe about 275 on this loan and you wanna make, you say you got an extra $5,000. You're like, I wanna make a $5,000 payment. So all you gotta do is scroll down to find what it would look like. So it would be like around what, 270 around there, right? 270-ish right here. So essentially, if you think about it, this was January 2024. You paid $5,000 extra. Now we're in November 2024. So almost, you almost just basically saved a year's worth of interest just by putting those extra $5,000. So that's about what, 10 months that it took off? Nine to 10 months around there? So watch this, right? If you, in case you don't believe me. So let's do an extra $5,000 payment in January 2024, right? So if my calculations was right, correct, sorry, uh, they should take off 10 months off this. So we'll see. This is just scratching the surface of what you can do. Your mortgage company wants you to make minimum payments every month for the rest of your life. Don't do that, okay? I get it, we're trying to keep our money as flexible as possible. You tell me, man, I mean, look, I love buying all kinds of things and I like having extra money to waste on computers and all kinds of games, right? But um, it all starts from the beginning part. If you bought this house, max ratio, 50% of your income, you're not gonna have the flexibility to do this and you're gonna get stuck in this pattern of just paying the mortgage payment every month and they're gonna have their heyday with you and make hundreds of thousands of dollars of the interest. Up front, you wanna make sure that you buy with the right budget in mind. Make sure you have that extra cash to be putting towards a house if the time is right. Clearly, plans change, life changes. Maybe a month or two, you might have to adjust and pay for some medical bills or something that might pop up, but that's okay because the following month, you can get back to it and make extra payments. A lot of our Dave Ramsey heads like to say, well, 15 year loan is the way to go. Why do they say this? Well, let me show you. When you get this loan and you make it a 30 year to 15 year loan, look what happens. The interest drops heavily. And of course you pay your loan off a lot faster. Is this some kind of magic? No, look at this. The interest of the first month is the same exact interest as the first month of the 30 year loan. So what's the difference between the 15 and the 30 year? Well, you guessed it. That balance is dropping at a lot higher rate because that number that the interest and the principal add up to with a 15 year loan is a lot higher. It's like instead of 1300, it might be 2000. So because the number's higher, the interest is still the same for the first payment, but that balance is gonna get being paid a lot faster. Now, of course, if you go 15 year, your interest rate will be a lot better. So that way, you know, you pay a lot less interest and you start paying your, you know, it's really good stuff, right? So clearly 15 years is the way to go, but just because you couldn't do it, you don't have to, you know, shame, you don't have to kink shame people for not doing 15 year loan. <laughs> Let me stop. You don't have to be ashamed of yourself for going with a 30 year loan. So if you can't refinance a 15 year or you couldn't originally afford a 15 year, then that's totally fine. Here's what you do to start tackling it down. You can go the passive way, you're just making sure to make that extra payment per month. You do save about this much in the loan like I expressed earlier and you save a lot of more interest. But if you're able to make an extra payment on top of your payment, perfect. You're gonna save a crap load of interest, there's a number, and you're gonna pay your loan a lot faster but that's gonna be a little more difficult and this is probably gonna be more suited for somebody who really bought with a great budget in mind, right? But quite frankly, I think you can should try to make the goal of making an extra three payments per year. How do we do this, Javier? That's insane. How would I be able to do that? Well, I'm not telling you to save, like if your payment's 1500 bucks, I'm not telling you to save you know, $4,500 and put towards that one month. First of all, you're not gonna, make three extra payments of the entire mortgage amount. Only look at what your principal and your interest is, okay? So let's say your principal and interest is this number that we've been using. If you save three times that amount, what you do is you get this number and you divide it by 12. A lot more manageable than having to come up with three or $4,000 randomly in one month. Now it's okay if you can't quite make it, like there's a month where you might not be able to meet it, and you know you can try to play catch up, but even if you somehow fall short and instead of paying an extra three months in one year, you pay an extra two months, it still adds up. The point is it's not it's not rocket science here. You know, people try to sell you these courses about do this, do that, you know, 
take out a second loan to do this, buy some Javier Vidanya NFTs to, you know, get your investment back, all that. It's not, it's not complicated. Just be aware of how the amortization works. Don't be afraid of it. And everyone gets an amortization schedule and they just get repelled by it. Like, ugh, this is scary. No, understand how it works. Make a diligent effort to make those extra payments. And those $300 might not seem like a lot. It's just like, ugh, you know, why am I doing this? I'm not even going to see it down the road. But by making these extra $300 payments, your future self is going to thank you. And more importantly, not only did you pay it off sooner, but your interest that you paid them is going to be a lot less. And the money that you put towards your house actually went towards your house, not to line up the bank, the bank's profits with the extra interest. And I don't care if you only live in the house for five or 10 years. It's the same thing. The faster you lower your principal, the more money you could potentially make when you sell the house. Paying extra money towards interest, you're not getting that money back. <laughs> you're not. So when you sell a house, it's the sales price minus fees minus your balance. Making extra payments towards the balance does reduce that balance. And essentially, when you sell the house down the road, you're paying yourself a little extra money down the road.